Hey, what's up guys? I'm going to unbox and review the Netgear Nighthawk RAXE 500. This is a Wi-Fi 6E router with a crazy fast speed rating of AXE 11,000 that's suitable for up to 60 devices, which is around what I have, so I will be testing that. It also supports multi-gigabit internet because of its multi-gig ethernet port. So I'm going to do speed tests on this thing and range tests. Let's go ahead and unbox this thing and see what it comes with. And real quick, Netgear did send me this router for free to do an honest review. They didn't pay me for this review. All right, so opening this up, it's fairly large. And as a comparison, I do have a normal sized router. So you guys could see there's a huge difference between the two in terms of ports and in terms of size. And I kind of like the way this one looks because it looks like it's from one of those Star Wars movies. It looks like kind of a, a fighter jet, if I can call it that. And there does seem to be a fan here and I'm assuming these are LED lights that light up. Okay, so we have the LED on and off. We have a factory reset. We have two USB 3.0 ports. We have, I believe all of these are gigabit ports, however, you can use WAN aggregation to get to multi-gig, which in this case is up to two gigabits per second internet speed since you are adding two gigabit ports to each other, assuming your modem also supports link aggregation since you would physically need to connect two ethernet cables going from your modem to your router. Now another option that wasn't obvious to me at least is that you can also just use port five to get to 2.5 gigabits per second internet speeds via one ethernet cable. Again, assuming your modem actually supports those speeds as well via one ethernet port. And it looks like you can aggregate these as well. And this port by itself is 2.5 gigabits. And power on and off and the power port. And if you guys are wondering, there is, these are wall mountable. Okay, so we get a quick start guide with some info on what the ports and stuff are. We have an ethernet cable. It is CAT5E, so it supports gigabit. So if you want to do 2.5, at least on the 2.5 port, you do need something faster. And we get a large power supply that is 100 to 240 volts. It's been over two weeks since I've been using this spaceship, and yes, I did say spaceship. It literally does look like one of those Star Wars movies. Looks really cool. I really like the design of this thing. But overall, the speeds and the range were very impressive. I will get into those numbers shortly. I did quickly want to say that what I noticed is on the SSIDs, the Wi-Fi name you connect to, on the main network, you can have a separate 2.4, a separate 5 gigahertz, and a separate 6 gigahertz band to connect to. Or you can have the 2.4 and the 5 gig connect, and it just puts out one Wi-Fi name. And when you connect your devices to it, it will automatically determine what it is, and it'll connect to the appropriate frequency, which is what I typically like to use. On the guest Wi-Fi, as of this current firmware that I was using, you cannot do that. So you will have a separate 2.4, a separate 5 gigahertz, and a separate 6 gigahertz. I didn't see an option to connect the 2.4 and the 5. This might not matter to a lot of people, but just wanted to point that out there. For my testing devices over Wi-Fi, I used my iPhone 14 Pro Max, which is my Wi-Fi 6 device, and a combination of my Pixel 7 Pro and Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra, which are my Wi-Fi 6E devices. Now the numbers from these are very similar, so I just went with the Samsung numbers in this case. Starting with the internet speed test, no matter how fast this router is, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speed. So in my case, that would be 940 megabits per second download and 880 megabits per second upload. Now, when I'm hooked up via ethernet to this thing, I get those speeds no problem. However, the Wi-Fi devices are usually a different story. So looking at the speeds, we could see we actually got some really good Wi-Fi speeds, especially for Wi-Fi 6E on the downloads and typical upload speeds. So the upload speeds that I see with most of the mesh Wi-Fi's and routers that I test are around this range in the high twos to basically the low fours. So it did okay for the upload, but amazing for the download. Now to truly test the system, I'm not going to be capping it by my internet speeds or the public speed test server that is being shared with a lot of other people and our companies. So in order to do that, I make my computer into a local speed test server and I go from Wi-Fi device or phone to router to computer 
isolating the router, giving me the best possible speeds this thing can deliver. And in this case, there is a huge increase both in download and upload speeds, as you guys can see in the Wi-Fi 6, and crazy fast speeds for a Wi-Fi 6E, which is typically the case because the 6 gigahertz band is crazy fast and this does have a very fast speed rating to support those speeds. Range test time. So range will vary based on location. If you're in between floors, if you have a lot of walls, if you're in a building with a lot of other routers around, all of this stuff can hurt your range. Now I'm in more of an open area, I would say, and at 20 feet away, I get some very, very good speeds. And at 50 feet, this was even more impressive because now I'm outside and I'm still getting crazy fast speeds. And this thing takes me all the way up to 350 feet, which is one of the longest range routers, mesh systems, period, whether it's a router or a mesh system I tested, that I've gone. Now, the crazy thing about this is it gets very fast speeds all the way up until 300 feet, which I typically don't see too often because some of the routers do go pretty far but right around 180 feet, they do tend to slow down quite a bit. Now the Netgear Nighthawk app is a very simplified app and you also get a browser interface. So if you go to routerlogin.com, if your computer is hooked up via ethernet to this thing, you can set them up either through the Netgear Nighthawk app or through the browser link. And the Nighthawk app is a very simplified approach. So you don't get too many options there. You pretty much get to choose your Wi-Fi names, your guest Wi-Fi, you could do an internet speed test, and that's about the extent of it. You can also sign up for their antivirus and security suite, I should call it, which does require a subscription, but I think they give a month for free. But aside from that, it's, it's more like a simple interface. If you wanna customize stuff, you have to go to their browser interface, which gives you a ton more options which is great, and that's actually what I used. I used the routerlogin.com to set this thing up this time around, even though you can also set this up with the Netgear app. But either way, you get a decent number of options uh, with the router login and normal, mm, a simplified approach with the Nighthawk app. Now, is it worth getting this? Why or why not? Well, honestly, it depends on your situation. So right off the bat, I will say that if you have internet speeds of up to gigabit and you want crazy fast Wi-Fi speeds and crazy range, this is a good pick. This thing can also support internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits, assuming your modem also supports that. So if you wanna go that route, you can also get this thing as well. But right off the bat, I would say for being a single router, it was honestly very impressive. But let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. And as always, smash that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next one.